Something extraordinary has just taken place on the African continent, and it may well reshape the future of global technology. For decades, the way 1.4 billion Africans accessed the internet was dictated by foreign companies. Their servers, their cables, their rules. But this week, that reality changed. Africa has officially switched on its own internet infrastructure, a bold step that challenges the dominance of tech giants like Google, Amazon, and Microsoft. This development is not a side story, it is a turning point. For years, the internet has been described as a single, global, unified system, a borderless network that gives everyone equal access to information. In practice, however, that has never been true. What we think of as the internet has largely been built, owned, and governed by a handful of Western corporations. For Africa, that meant every search, every click, every message often had to pass through servers in Europe or North America before finding its way back home. The cost of that system has been staggering. African countries have consistently faced some of the highest internet prices in the world. The infrastructure has been slow, unreliable, and deeply unequal. And the most important cost of all? Control. Western companies have held a powerful grip over African communications, data, and even the flow of knowledge itself. That imbalance is what the African Union set out to change with the launch of the Continental Internet Exchange, CIEC. This is not a new provider competing for bandwidth. It is a complete, parallel infrastructure that bypasses Western systems altogether. South Africa has one of the highest internet penetration rates on the continent. But despite that, people who live in remote places like this say they don't use the internet. Two of the biggest barriers according to research, affordability and accessibility. Mankosi is made up of 12 villages, home to over 6,000 people. And until late last year, there was no electricity here. Running water is still a luxury. But they have a cheap and stable Wi-Fi network. They built and registered their own internet service provider. Community networks like this one could be a way to connect Africa to the global village. Driven by the innovation and energy of the youth, the people of Mount Corsi say this is just the start for Zenzeleni. This is my dream now. It is inside my heart now. I can't run from this now anymore. A digital highway built by Africa for Africa. To grasp the scale of what has been built, imagine a highway system. For decades, Africans were forced to pay tolls to use roads built and owned by outsiders. Every journey, even a short one, was expensive and inefficient. Now, Africa has paved its own network of roads, free from foreign toll booths. Instead of physical highways, this project involves fiber optic cables, advanced data centers, and exchange points in every major city. More than 100,000 kilometers of fiber have been laid. 47 state-of-the-art data centers are already operational. And for the first time, African internet traffic can stay on African soil. Consider this. When someone in Nairobi accesses a site hosted in Cape Town, the request no longer has to travel to Europe before bouncing back to the continent. It stays within Africa's borders, dramatically reducing cost and latency. What was once a structural disadvantage has been replaced with a homegrown solution that rivals the networks of Silicon Valley's most powerful firms. But infrastructure alone isn't the revolution. The true breakthrough lies in the software running on top of it. The CIA is powered by what is being called the African Digital Protocol, ADP, a new set of digital rules that are fundamentally incompatible with the old Western Internet protocols. This is where the transformation becomes historic. Websites and applications built for the traditional internet cannot operate seamlessly on Africa's new system without significant reworking. Think of it as creating a new digital language. Africa speaks it fluently. The rest of the world must learn if they want to engage. For a company like Google, this is a nightmare scenario. For two decades, Google's search engine has been the undisputed gateway to information. That dominance has rested on their control of indexing protocols the way information is organized, stored, and retrieved. But ADP does not rely on Google's indexing system. Instead, it introduces distributed knowledge mapping, a system that prioritizes African content, languages, and perspectives. A new way of seeing knowledge. Take the example of African history. Under the old system, search results were shaped by algorithms designed in California, often privileging Western sources, perspectives, and languages. 
Under the CIA, a search for the same topic produces results from African universities, research institutions, and cultural archives. The information is presented in local languages and contextualized for local realities. This shift might sound technical, but the implications are profound. For African users, it means access to information that reflects their own voices and experiences, not diluted or filtered through someone else's lens. For Google, it signals the erosion of a monopoly that has defined the digital age. Beyond search a complete ecosystem, the CIX is not stopping at search. It has already rolled out African alternatives to Google's most profitable services, an email system built for local use, cloud storage hosted in African data centers, a video sharing platform designed to elevate African creators, an advertising network that channels revenue into African businesses instead of Silicon Valley. Each service is engineered to be faster, cheaper, and more relevant to African users than the foreign options they once relied upon. Economic independence through technology. The financial stakes are enormous. Each year, African nations spend more than $50 billion on digital services provided by Western companies. Most of that money flows directly out of the continent, enriching shareholders' oceans away. Now, with the CIX, those billions will circulate within Africa's own economy. That means jobs for African engineers. It means contracts for African data centers. It means investment in local startups that once struggled to compete with multinational giants. In economic terms, this is a multiplier effect. Every dollar that once left the continent now generates multiple streams of local benefit. A generation ready to embrace. Perhaps the most significant factor driving this transformation is Africa's demographic reality. With more than 60% of the population under 25, Africa is the youngest continent in the world. These are digital natives raised on smartphones, social media, and online culture. For years, they adapted to systems built elsewhere, often in languages and frameworks that did not reflect their daily lives. Now, for the first time, they have an internet ecosystem tailored to their realities. Adoption has been astonishing. In just three days since launch, over 200 million Africans have begun using the CIX as their primary digital platform. No technology in history, not Facebook, not Instagram, not TikTok, has achieved uptake at this pace. Why? The answer is simple, it works better. Faster connections, lower costs, local relevance. For the young generation, the shift is not a question of patriotism or politics. It is a matter of practicality. Google on the defensive. For Google, this represents the gravest threat since its founding. The company cannot simply buy its way into the African market, as it has done in other regions. It cannot replicate the system overnight. To compete, Google would have to build its own parallel internet infrastructure, a task that could cost hundreds of billions of dollars and take decades. For the first time, one of the great empires of the digital age is facing the real possibility of irrelevance in an entire region of the world. The African Union was quietly working on something far more consequential, a digital reality built entirely on its own terms. For years, Africa's internet infrastructure had been routed through Europe, dependent on American data centers and dominated by foreign tech firms. That arrangement ended the moment Afronet went live. Launched discreetly at a secure AU summit in Addis Ababa, this wasn't just an internet service provider. It was an entirely new digital ecosystem designed to serve African interests first. At its core was a sovereign DNS system paired with a custom-built search engine, Ubuntu Web, and decentralized cloud infrastructure stretching across Nigeria, Kenya, and Egypt. To guarantee independence, the continent deployed its own satellites, supported by Algeria and South Africa, while military-grade encryption developed by the One Africa Army's Cyber Warfare Unit, known as the Zulu Division, safeguarded every digital door and window. For the first time in history, Africa owns the cables, the code, and the cloud that keeps its people online. The launch of the Continental Internet Exchange, CIX, has already transformed the way Africa connects, but its implications stretch far beyond the continent. What began as a regional project to lower costs and improve connectivity has quickly become a model for the rest of the world. Other regions are watching Africa closely, and some are preparing to follow its example. Within days of the announcement, leaders in South America declared their intention to study and replicate the African model. Several countries in Asia have initiated similar conversations. If these plans move forward, the global internet as we know it, a centralized system dominated by Western companies, 
could fracture into multiple regional networks. This shift marks the end of the illusion that the Internet is a neutral global commons. It has always been a tool of power. Now, for the first time, that power is being redistributed. For years, critics have described the relationship between Africa and Western tech companies as a form of digital colonialism. African data fueled the profits of corporations headquartered thousands of miles away. African users generated content, clicks, and engagement, but the value of those activities was extracted and shipped abroad. The CIX is the first serious attempt to break that cycle. By keeping traffic within the continent, by prioritizing African knowledge, and by retaining digital revenue locally, Africa has rewritten the rules of engagement. No longer dependent on Western corporations for basic digital services, African nations can negotiate on equal footing. This independence has profound geopolitical consequences. It means that Africa cannot be cut off from critical services by foreign sanctions. It means that the continent's digital infrastructure is not vulnerable to political pressure from Washington, Brussels, or Silicon Valley. And it means that African leaders can chart their own course in the digital economy, free from external dictates. The company most threatened by this shift is Google. Its dominance has always rested on two pillars, control of infrastructure and control of information flow. Both are being undermined. The African digital protocol does not rely on Google's systems. Its distributed knowledge mapping prioritizes African sources and perspectives. That directly challenges Google's role as the gatekeeper of information. And because African services now offer alternatives to Gmail, YouTube, Google Drive, and AdSense, the entire Google ecosystem is under pressure. Even more worrying for Google is the speed of adoption. Within days, hundreds of millions of Africans switched to the new system. That level of momentum is nearly impossible to reverse. If trends continue, Google's user base in Africa could collapse within months. The broader risk is that Africa's model spreads. If South America, Asia, or even parts of Europe adopt similar systems, Google's global dominance could erode. For a company that built its empire on universal reach, the fragmentation of the Internet is nothing short of an existential threat. The driving force behind this revolution is Africa's youth. With 60% of the population under 25, the continent has a generation ready to embrace change. These young people are not nostalgic for the old Internet. They are pragmatic eager to use tools that work better for them. The CIX meets that demand. It is faster, cheaper, and more relevant. It speaks their languages, reflects their cultures, and provides opportunities for creation and innovation. For a generation that has often been described as the future of Africa, this infrastructure ensures that the future will be built on African terms. The shockwaves of this development are already being felt in boardrooms and government offices worldwide. Western tech companies are scrambling to reassess their strategies. Policymakers in Europe and North America are holding emergency discussions about what a fragmented Internet means for trade, security, and influence. Meanwhile, countries in the global south see Africa's success as proof that alternatives are possible. The notion that digital dependence is inevitable has been shattered. The global south now has a blueprint for digital sovereignty and the political courage to pursue it. History will likely remember this moment as the beginning of the post-Google era. For 20 years, Google reigned as the undisputed monarch of the Internet. Its algorithms shaped what people read, watched, and knew. But its dominance depended on a world where infrastructure and protocols were beyond the reach of regions like Africa. That world no longer exists. Africa has demonstrated that an alternative is possible. And not only possible, but preferable. By building systems that prioritize local needs over global monopolies, Africa has not just leveled the playing field, it has tilted it. The launch of the Continental Internet Exchange is not just an African story, it is a global story. It signals the end of digital colonialism, the rise of regional sovereignty, and the unraveling of Western monopolies. The Internet will never again be what it was last week. It is being remade and Africa is leading the way. If you've followed this story to the end, we want to hear from you. What do you think about Africa's digital revolution? Drop your thoughts in the comments. Support this work by giving the video a like and subscribe to the channel to stay updated on stories that are shaping the future.